It is probably one of the most famous desserts. No matter where you travel, you say Bananas Fosters, you know what it is. I'm ready to have it. You ready to have it? What the heck, let's do it. What up, y'all? I'm Philip Lopez, and I'm standing right here on the banks of the Mississippi River. This is one of the original sites of the banana warehouse, where these big container ships come in from South America. They would load all their bananas right here. I'm gonna head over to Commander's Palace, talk to T. Martin. We're gonna eat some bananas foster. We're gonna talk about the history and the politics of bananas. This is Good Gumbo. Hey, Chef, what's going on, man? Oh, what's up, Just? Enjoying the view? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, nice. Yeah. Bananas here in New Orleans is a cultured past, positive and negative, and this is the place where it actually happened. Yeah, right here we're at the Arado Street Wharf, which looks a lot different today than it would have a sure. century and a half ago. But I hear there's a guy, he ended up being in New Orleans and being like the most influential banana exporter kind of guy. Yeah, Sam Murray, Sam the Banana Man. Sam the Banana Man came to New Orleans. His family immigrated from Russia. He made his fortune in the banana trade as head of the United Fruit Company, one of the world's biggest fruit companies at the time. Very, very wealthy, he built the famous house now used by the president of Tulane University. His banana empire was very controversial in Honduras and Guatemala, where he had a lot, most people say too much, influence on governments and businesses. And that is where the term banana republic comes from. There's this long history, this long relationship between New Orleans and places like Honduras because right. of the port. And then when bananas come along, you know, it becomes a much closer relationship. But this was, you know, part of the lifeblood of the city. And right here was a really important place for tropical fruit to come out because this is where United Fruit had this big automated facility that opened, I believe, about 1908, 1910. Before that, if you could imagine unloading a cargo of bananas, like crawling into the bay of the ship, <laughs> you'd have a chain of man, sort of like Bucket Brigade, handing a stock of bananas to man to man and out the ship and out onto waiting wagons. These were the longshoremen, the Banana Handlers Union. This was very important to make New Orleans what it became. That's such an awesome name, the Banana yeah. Handlers the Union. Banana Handler, yeah. Of course, all these bananas inspire one of New Orleans' most famous desserts, Bananas Foster. T, you and I have known each other for a while now. Yeah. This is probably one of my favorite restaurants in the whole city. This place means home. This place means New Orleans. You have this personality, this smile, it just lights up the room. Oh, you're sweet. But the bananas foster that you guys serve here lights up this room as well. So where did this banana fosters come from? One day my family had started at the Absent House. Good Irish people start with a bar. They then moved across the street and were running the Vieux Carré restaurant. My mother was brand new in the business. Her brother, Owen, was there. And he comes in one day and he says to Ella, he called her kid. He said, hey, kid, I'm doing a dinner to honor my friend Richard Foster tomorrow night. He's the new head of the Vice Commission. We're going to do a dessert and name it for him. And she says, uh, I, I, no, we're not. I'm not doing that. I don't have time for that. You told me to do the inventory. And he said, kid, dessert tonight <laughs> to honor Dick Foster. So off she goes. She's running around. And the maitre d' was a man named Frank Bertusi. He said to her, what, what the heck's the matter with you, Ella? Owen says, I have to create this dessert for tonight. And I don't know what the hell to do. And I mean, it's literally cases of bananas, you know, just lined up on the wall. And so she says, I'm thinking I'm going to do something with bananas. And he says, you know, why don't we, you know, they got all those desserts around the corner at Antoine's and Arno's that they're flame. And she says, well, you're right. Let's flame something. So they just start messing around. They sauteed some bananas, you know, like their mother would do with the butter, but then they said, let's add rum to flame it. What the heck, let's add banana liqueur too. You know, it'll smell good, it'll flame. Everybody will be going through the restaurant and, you know, we'll have our dessert to compete with baked Alaska, which they didn't think was much anything, you know. So that's what happened. And they served it that night, and his name was Dick Foster, so they named it Bananas Foster. How good does that look? Dig in. Look at this. All right. Oh, yeah. How about them apples? Girl. How about them bananas? <laughs> <laughs> Here's to my mom and my uncle and Mr. Foster. Here's to you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Craving more? Check out PBS and Eater's new season of No Passport Required. Join Chef Marcus Samuelson on a journey across the U.S. to celebrate the incredible immigrant traditions and cuisine woven into American food and culture. Tune in or stream the show on the PBS video app. Head to the link in the description below for more.